It's time for the Rocky Mountain Horror Show. <laughs> We saw all three terrifiers. <laughs> yes, we did. I just love Art the Clown. <laughs> and by love, I mean I recognize and now respect him <laughs> as a member of the pantheon of horror film franchise figureheads. Right, right. Like, you know, Freddy Krueger, mm -hmm. Mike Myers, Jason, Pinhead, Ghostface. Yeah. Chucky. Bruce, Pennywise? Pennywise. Well, okay, Pennywise would be in a different category, which I also recognize Art the Clown is now a member. Yeah, the scary clown category. The killer clown category. Also a good one. Like the killer clowns from outer space. Mm -hmm. Clown. Mm -hmm. uh, Art the Clown, Pennywise. Um, I don't know, John Wayne Gacy, Ronald McDonald, wherever you want. <laughs> <laughs> you think they're going to do a Steamboat Willie to Ronald McDonald once he hits the public domain? Yeah, <laughs> maybe. It could happen. Uh, Bruce, the shark. Mm -hmm. From Finding Nemo. No, did yeah. you did you oh, know I guess that's it's Scream Boat? My bad. <laughs> <laughs> so dumb. Did you know uh, the Jaws shark is called Bruce? Oh, and that's why the shark in Finding Nemo is oh. Bruce the shark. That's actually kind of cute. I love that. One thing I love about Art the Clown though is the actor had. He's got a three name name. I forget his name. <laughs> David Sim Martin Chapman. No. It's like Danny McGuffin Guffin. That's the guy that shot John Lennon. <laughs> anyway. Um, <clears throat> But uh, he he must have gone to mime school or studied mimes. Something. Because his body language is incredible. One of the things that I think makes Art the Clown so scary is he doesn't talk. Right. Yeah. And that's the thing. It is so much harder. Keep that, you guys. Right. Right. Well, and I think it's a little harder to be scary if you have lines. Yes. You know? Exactly. And so all he does is nonverbal communication. Mm -hmm. And the actor is so good at it. He's really good. It's so scary. Mm -hmm. Now, I know that the actor that plays him in the movies isn't the same that played him in the shorts that predate the movies. Yeah. Which we haven't seen yet. So we might we might have to do a little update on that next time. Do a little youtube and Yeah. Well, and I kind of want to come... You know what? It would be kind of fun to compare Art the Clowns. It would be. Yeah. But yeah, he is just terrifying. Now, the movie was campy. The yeah. acting in the third one, not as bad as the first two. Uh, they totally sent their actors to acting camp, and I'm very impressed. They did a good job. It's nice to see that. And also, <laughs> yeah. what the hell year was it? They all have smartphones mm -hmm. and trucks that right. are modern, mm -hmm. but it looks like it's from somewhere in the early to mid 80s. Right. Well, and I will say place. I do think that there's a lot of like um Even the film grain and the cheesy synthesizer soundtrack. Well, that's what I'm saying. I think that horror really peaked in the 80s and became kind of a big um became a big genre. And so I think that we Halloween, sort of Halloween, Friday the 13th, Nightmare on Elm Street, right, absolutely. Right. Yeah. Well, and even look at Stranger Things, obviously not made in the 80s but placed in the 80s. I think that people just sort of connect the two. Yeah, I almost wonder if they were going for a Stranger Things vibe in Terrifier 3. It wouldn't surprise me, honestly. Yeah. That and also I think that they like that like I think that horror in general likes to sort of um pull from nostalgia a little bit okay. to sort of um give a false sense of security. <laughs> so they give you lots of familiar imagery so that when it's completely ruined by whatever evil character they've created, it feels more devastating. Hey, senorita, that's astute. Thank you. Two people will get that. My big thing with Terrifier is realistically, the story is not that great, but it's not, you're not there for the story. You're not, you're there for the slasher, mm -hmm. you know, and the practical effects are fantastic. It's slash tastic. Yeah. If yeah. you want a good old slasher film romp, mm -hmm. and I'm kind of glad they're bringing that genre back a little bit. Yeah. You know what absolutely killed? And, and so I, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's time to revisit what killed the slasher genre for me. Mm -hmm. I swore them off forever. Mm. I, obviously not. But was Rob Zombie's House of a Thousand Corpses. Have yeah. you ever seen that? No, I've heard that it's too much. Speaking of Killer Clowns, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Captain Spaulding, I want to say. Mm -hmm. The guy that plays him in that and I want to say the sequel. But it was just, I. it was a rental and I had to just sort of disassociate half an hour in. I was like, right. it's too much. And and I, by the way, I thought, speaking of that, thinking mm -hmm. about, speaking of it being too much, I did some, see some really creative marketing for Terrifier 3. Really? Yes. Like the typical, and I was sort of reminded of, 
oh, this is what they say about slasher films, like people right. puking in the aisles. There was that rumor. Yeah. And uh, somebody had to leave, you know, three minutes into the film because they were having a panic attack. Right. That kind of urban legend stuff that's unverifiable and probably didn't happen or it happened to a friend of a friend, wink, wink. Right, right. But the most creative pre-marketing for Terrifier 3 I saw is is a simple um, photo of somebody's Apple Watch. Right. And their heartbeat was through the roof. Yeah. You know, they probably had just gone on a workout or something. Probably or something, yeah. Yeah, but there was a popcorn bucket in the background, I want to say, and Mm -hmm. I thought, that's gold. Yeah, I mean, genuinely. That's a 2024 way of saying. Well, especially because it feels like fact. (laughs) Yes, right. You know, it feels so undeniable. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, but realistically, it could be faked. But yeah, I thought it was... Fun and campy. There yeah. were definitely a couple of parts that were uncomfy and kind of hard to watch. I mean, how many times did I go, whoa, ooh? Yeah, I mean, I... Two or three times. Yeah, there were quite a few. And especially having it on the big screen, it was kind of a <laughs> lot to take in, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Here's another complaint I have about Terrifier 3, which isn't really a complaint about the film itself. It's a complaint about Google, specifically autocomplete. And here's right. another spoiler <laughs> if you want to hit plus 30 on your podcast app. <laughs> So I went to Google Terrifier 3 show times. Right. And when I got past the word show, uh huh. the autocomplete said Terrifier 3 shower scene. And I'm like, oh, great. Right. There's going to be a shower scene. Yeah. Which, I mean, and also. And there is. Well, and also, as someone who wasn't spoiled, as soon as I saw the shower scene, I was like, oh, as I know what's going to happen. As soon as you saw like, the shower stall. As We're, soon as you see that in a horror movie, right, right. you know what's going to happen. It's a slasher fi- flick. That's like the rule. Yeah. You know? <laughs> right. Yeah. Alfred Hitchcock is turning over in his grave. <laughs> well, and frankly, that one's kind of a two for one, too, because they're in the shower and they're f***ing, and those are two things that get you killed in a horror movie. That is true. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs>